Hey guys, how's it going? It's Ray here. So today I have another video for you guys, and that video is how good is Chen? So I think that Chen is, I'll say right off the bat, the best tank in Hero League. I think he is extremely strong for a number of reasons, which we'll get into later. Um, but the main one is he does a lot of damage and he's really hard to kill. So first, let's go over his talents. Um, you're basically going to be building Chen as kind of a tanky brawler. And your job in team fights is basically to kill their back line um, or to peel. You can't really peel their front line, your front line because uh, you don't really have any kind of CC in your kit. The only thing you'll have is Wandering Keg, and that's well, not what I'm going to recommend. So let's start at level one here. There's only two talents that you'll you'll be choosing at level one. One will be Grounding Brew, and the other is Elusive Brawler. So which one do you take? Pretty simple. If they have a lot of ability power, uh, you take Grounding Brew. If they have a lot of auto attacks, you take Elusive Brawler. So Grounding Brew is really good versus heroes like Li Ming. It can be good versus heroes like Kael'thas. Um, but you have to be careful if they have too much CC because you'll just get interrupted while drinking and you won't really gain any benefit to Grounding Brew. But Grounding Brew is really, really strong if they have a lot of ability power and they don't have a lot of interrupts. Elusive Brawler is really powerful as well if you're against heroes that are auto attack based. So if they have an Illidan, if they have a Tychus, if they have a Vala, if they have heroes of, of that nature, it's really powerful. And the important thing to note um, as well against heroes like Tychus, um, this talent will actually completely counter him because he'll go to proc his minigun and drain all of your health. And Elusive, Elusive Brawler will cancel all of that damage. So <clears throat> if they have a mix of both, you kind of go with your gut and whatever you think is going to be most effective. Note that Elusive Brawler will also evade all auto attacks from structures as well. So you can tank structures, you can tank tower shots, um, unless you push a little bit harder. So take that into consideration as well. Um, at level three, or sorry, at level four, um, you could arguably say that any talent here is viable, but I will definitely recommend Ring of Fire. Uh, Ring of Fire does a lot of damage. So at level 20, you can see 114 damage per second, AoE. And if you compare that to Illidan's Immolation, it does more than twice as much damage per second. It, it does a lot of damage. So this is basically why Chen is also called the tanky Illidan, because he has uh, Immolation that does more than twice as much damage. Uh, note that Illidan can keep it up a lot more often. This is a three second duration, and the cooldown for Breath of Fire is five seconds, so you won't have 100% uptime unless you get um, another round at 16 and you rock it properly, um, but it still does a ton of damage. So let's compare this to Deadly Strike, which doubled, doubles the damage of Flying Kick. So one thing to note is that you have to have your shields up from Fortifying Brew to increase the damage, um, but Flying Kick, Flying Kick also no longer costs Brew. So it doubles the damage of Flying Kick, which does um, 246 damage, which is going so it's going to it's going to increase your damage by 246. And if you look at Ring of Fire, Ring of Fire is going to proc three times of 114, so that's going to give you way more damage than 246. And it also is AOE, so I would recommend just getting Ring of Fire because it's going to do more damage and it's AOE damage. So this is going to dramatically help your wave clear, help you do merc camps, help you clear, help you uh, push things. And I I just don't see the value in, in Deadly Strike. Keg Toss can be good, but if you're getting Keg Toss, it's for utility. So when you stack it, it increases the range of your W, and it gives you two charges, and it slightly increases the damage. So the range will be from here to about like over here. So it's quite a long range, and you can just spam it, especially with another round, which reduces the cooldown of your next ability. Um, so this is basically kind of a utility build. So you get Keg Toss, and you'd basically slow the enemy team from a range. So this would be good if they have... A lot of ranged heroes or you're trying to kite effectively for your allies so say you have solo tank chen and you have three ranged and they're constantly diving your teammates you might go keg toss to help heal um, in all other situations i'd recommend ring of fire so at level seven you have three choices all of the choices here are good however i've said this before and i've gotten a bit of flack for it. i think boulder flavor is the best option most of the time so most people will go Broodmaster's Balance. Um, you get an extra, quite a bit of health regen, and you get movement speed. So 
Um, while you're at or below 50 brew, you, you gain 20% movement speed. So this means that if you W and Q, you're automatically at 50 brew, so you gain the, the movement speed. Um, so it's really easy to proc the movement speed, and as soon as you drink, you'll obviously um, be above the 50, so you can gain the health regen. So basically this works as, um, in lane, you should almost you should basically always um, have be above the 50 brew, so you always have health regen in lane, which is good. And then outside of when when you're using your abilities, obviously you're low on brew, so you want the movement speed. It helps you retreat and maybe chase as well. Um, but the the big part of this talent is really the movement speed at 50 or below, 20% movement speed. Okay, so you have then we have Boulder Flavor. Actually, I'll cover Refreshing Elixir first. So this is really really strong. It's basically amp healing. On steroids so when you're when you're drinking fortifying brew you gain 60 percent healing which is a lot of healing so i would take this talent if you have double healer um, refreshing elixir is going to give you a ton of value um, out of your healing um, it, it literally has just like an uther q almost heals you to full it's ridiculous um, very very strong talent but situational okay boulder flavor the controversy let's begin uh, so boulder flavor Instantly gives you 700 shields. Okay, so we're at level 20, but it instantly gives you um, a large amount of shields. Okay, so if we read the description of Fortifying Brew, it gives you 465 temporary shields per second. Okay, so when you press D, you don't instantly gain. You don't instantly gain 465. Okay, so you can see that it procs. At, at basically every 0.5 seconds, it's going to proc. Okay, so after one second, you'll have 465 temporary shields, okay? So after one second, you'll have the shield proc. Um, now with Boulder Flavor, you get an additional 700 shield, okay? So you'll instantly gain the shield when you proc it. So let's look at this again. So this is without it, and this is with Boulder Flavor. You instantly gain the shield, okay? This is on top of what you'd normally get. So you get an extra 700. So, so 700 basically equates to um, 1.5 seconds of drinking. So you get 1.5 seconds of drinking instantly when you get Boulder Flavor. That's a lot of shields. Okay, 700. Okay, if we compare this to Brewmaster's Balance, where you gain 39 health per second, 39 health per second compared to instantly getting 700 shields. Okay, um, I feel like Boulder Flavor is always going to be more effective when you're fighting the enemy team. Sure, Brute Master's Balance is going to give you health regen when you're not fighting, but it, like as long as you have a healer, you should be topped off before you go into a team fight. So Boulder Flavor is going to give you significantly more shielding, like a lot more shielding in fights. Okay, and it also has the bonus of one second extra um, shields. The last one second longer, so from two seconds to three seconds, which is again a huge, huge increase. 50% um, increase on shield duration is a lot. Like, so if you drink. You're already full shields, and then you can walk around for a little bit longer. Like that's the fact that they just, even if it just lasted one extra second, it'd be a good talent. But it gives you, it instantly gives you 700 shield, um, or 1.5 seconds of drinking, plus the extra one second duration. So this, this is, you can't even compare the amount of, of health sustain and, and, and um, impact in team fights of Boulder flavor compared to the health regen from Brewmaster's Balance. Okay, so if you're getting Brewmaster's Balance, like I said, you're getting it for the movement speed. You're not getting it for the health regen. 39 health per second is not a lot of health in a team fight. Okay, you're gonna get, you're gonna benefit way, way, way more than Boulder flavor. I can't, I can't overstate how much more effective Boulder flavor is in fights. Um, not only that, it lets you tank towers a lot more effectively because you gain the shields a lot quicker. So normally, if you hit, if you go under. The tower, you're going to spend like a second or so drinking, and then you get the shields. But with Boulder Flavor, you instantly gain the shield, so it makes tanking towers better. Um, overall, I just find that Boulder Flavor is by far the better option. Okay, so let's talk about the movement speed compared to Boulder Flavor. The movement speed can be good, right? I'm not denying that the movement speed is bad, and I'm not saying that Brewmaster's Balance is a bad talent. I think it, it's, a, it's a good talent, but I just find that Boulder Flavor gives way too much, uh, gives a lot more impact in fights and in laning and then everything else than Brewmaster's Balance. Uh, I also find that with Chen, like the way that Chen works um, when you're fighting, this is this is how you this is how you lane and you, and you play Chen. Okay, so you basically you walk up to minions, and you press D, and then you drink until your cooldowns come back up. 
and then you W. Okay, so if you're in a team fight, this is how the team fights will work. You'll basically W, drunk, jump, and then drink. And then once your cooldowns come back up, you do the same thing. Because all your cooldowns are five seconds. So you basically just drink while your abilities are on cooldown. Okay, pop the Lucid Brawler there. You can, I can tank both the towers here. And you, 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 but you can see that Boulder Flavor offers a lot more shielding. Um, and you're, I'm not walking a lot, right? Like I'm not, there's not a lot of walking with with Chen. So of course you can play differently and you can play more aggressively and you can you can auto attack a lot more. But I find generally you're just, you're just, you have, Flying Kick is only a five second cooldown. So you're jumping constantly. Um, and, I, and Brewmaster's Balance is only going to help you if you're running away. Because if you're running towards an enemy, you can just jump on them. If you're running away, um, then the Moon Suit will help. Um, okay, so, that, so obviously Brewmaster's Balance has, has more use than that. And, uh, and I'm kind of oversimplifying it. But I, I do personally really like Boulder Flavor. And I recommend that you at least try it before... Um, hating on me and just saying Brewmaster's Balance is our Lord and Savior. Okay, so level 10, Wandering Keg, Stormworth, Fire. Now, which one do you take? I always go Stormworth and Fire in Hero League. Okay, if, you, if I'm playing competitive, there's an argument to be made for Keg, but I think that Stormworth and Fire has way too much value compared to Wandering Keg. Wandering Keg requires your teammates to follow up on you. Okay, if, you, if your teammates don't follow up on you, they don't follow up on the keg target, then it doesn't do anything. Um, obviously, it's really, really strong to steal bosses and to steal objectives. But aside from that, like there's no there's no solo play for wandering keg. Maybe you can peel, but so my argument for storm earth and fire is basically you can storm earth and fire, and you alt, and you jump into the fight, and you can solo their backline heroes, and you can just kill their whole team. It basically gives you a second health bar um, as long as you don't die while casting it, which you shouldn't. Um, and it has a lot more impact. So basically, you should have two tanks to Chen anyway, or at least another Bruiser, and your other tank would peel, and you would just die of the enemy team. Um, I find that, so if, if we turn on uh, minions here, and this is obviously not the best example, but so let's, let's, let's find Vala here. Turn Vala on, get Storm Earth and Fire. So I just want you to look at how much damage this this ability does. Okay, this can this Storm Earth and Fire will solo any hero that doesn't get significant peeling. Okay, it's almost impossible to run away from, and it does a ton of damage. So you can see that she's basically instant. So <laughs> if she runs, you can jump again, um, and it, it's it's just really really strong. Okay, um, it, it requires at least two people to deal with Storm Earth and Fire. On the enemy team, or you will kill someone. Okay, even if they have like a Malfurion and a Vala, like you can still kill the Vala through um, the Malfurion heals, especially if he has Twilight Dream. And like the they they have enough health that you can't just it, you can't just straight up kill them. It's not like Samurai clones that die a lot like that quickly. They actually do a lot of damage, um, or they have a lot of health. The clone. So, or this elemental spirits, I guess I should call them. Okay, so a little bit more info on how they work. Um, when you alt, you have 12 seconds, and each each elemental or each spirit has an ability. So if one one spirit dies, that ability becomes unavailable to you. Okay. Um, your W basically just makes two heroes jump. Um, the two melee ones. So you have two melee ones and a range one. The the range one, the storm one, as you can see here, does by far the most DPS. I feel like it does as much DPS as both of the melee combined. Um, and both of the melee do. I feel like they all have the same health, but both the melee um, do a lot less damage. So you're basically when you use this ability, you're just gonna run up to someone, jump on them, which will slow them, and then you're gonna use your you know, press E, which increases attack speed by 100%, and then you're gonna activate your Q um, to just if, if they're hiding, to so give you extra speed. Um, now, important thing to note is that you will always spawn on the on the storm one once the once the cast finishes. Okay, so you can see that once the it times out, you'll spawn on the storm one. Okay, if the storm one dies. If the storm one dies, you'll spawn on the earth one, the green one, okay? And if that one dies, you'll spawn on the fire one. So it's it's storm, earth, and fire. 
um, which I just noticed is the name of the ability. Okay, so if you need to remember which which one you're spawning on, just look at the name of the ability. The order you spawn is Storm, Earth, Fire. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for Storm, Earth, Fire. For Barrel, um, you can. I feel like a lot of the time you're, you're going to be stuck in the fight and you have to barrel out um, as well. But with Storm, Earth, Fire, you can alt and just keep going. Um, something important to note with Storm, Earth, Fire, though, is that you should be you should be using it before you go into a fight, especially if they have a lot of interrupts. Okay, the last thing you want to do is jump in and get CC locked and just die before you can alt. That is not what you want. Um, so make sure, like, if you if they're the enemy team's fighting in a lane or something, you just go in a bush and you alt and then you engage on them. Okay, uh, and that'll guarantee that you'll get your damage output and you'll come out full health. Okay. Um, okay, so 13, um, not the best available talents at 13, but they're still decent. So Touch of Honey increases the Keg Smash slow from 25% to 40%, which is a pretty decent increase. Flying Click will slow by 70% uh, if they're they're soaked in Brew, which is Keg Smash, um, or 35% otherwise. And then Withering Flames will reduce the damage that a hero does with ability power. So Withering Flames is situational. You know, if they have a lot of casters, it can be good. Um, but most of the time, you're just going to go pressure point. If you went keg toss, uh, a touch of honey can be really good. Um, or if you go keg toss, you have to take a touch of honey. I should say, um, that's kind of the build. Um, otherwise, I, it's best to just go pressure point. Sometimes I, I'll go a touch of honey, but otherwise, um, I think pressure point is just the safest. Okay, so at 16, um, again. There's, there's no options here except for another round. Okay, so enough to share is bad and flying leap is bad. 20% increased kick range is irrelevant. Um, I mean, not totally irrelevant, but I don't think it's worth a 16 talent. I think another round's just clearly better. Um, and if you compare it to enough to share, it's 118 seconds, or it's 118 per second um, of shields to your allies, which is not a lot. Okay, um, it's giving you like a fourth. It gives you a fourth of the temporary shields that you drink is given to your allies. That's really, really low. Um, and you shouldn't be like just drinking in your ally with your allies in team fights. Okay, so you know if, if you're if you're jumping in on their back line as well, like your allies are not going to be any, anywhere close. So you might get like three or four procs on a tank, um, and that's just you know not a lot at all. It's you give 400 at level 20 shields to a tank after drinking for four seconds or 450 or whatever. It's, it's not a lot of shields at all. Um, so another round. Um, also, there's, so if you look at the, the, the size of your keg smash, it's not that big, right? The tooltip actually doesn't say fully what it does. So it actually increases. The, I feel like it's the radius is increased by 100%. So you have a lot bigger radius for uh, another round. And this is just not brought up at all. I don't know. People just don't notice it. Um, it's not a bug, as far as I'm aware. It was in PTR when they reworked Chen. Um, I'm pretty sure they just forgot to put it in a tooltip. Um, so either way, um, after you hit a hero with Keg Smash, it reduces the cooldown of your next base ability by three seconds. So it gives you some good cooldown reduction. A lot of the time, it's awkward to use. So usually you go, you know, you'll W E as your combo, and um, it'll it basically reduce the cooldown of your E by from five seconds to um, two seconds, which is awkward because you don't really want to do that uh, because you usually you keg smash with Breath of Fire. So using one with the other is kind of anti-use. So uh, what you can do instead is um, use keg smash and then flying kick and then use Breath of Fire. So then Q and then you E. And that would be a bit of a better combo. So you have your, your flying kick on a lot lower of a cooldown, um, but you still have your Breath of Fire. And kick smash at the same time. Okay, so at level 20, um, pretty easy choice here. So with Storm Earth and Fire, you're going to go Elemental Conduit. So this might not look that good, but it makes your um, spirits even harder to kill, and it, it basically uh, just makes the whole ability stronger. So it per gives you permanent attack speed. Um, 100% increases permanently increases the attack speed by 100% instead of just by um, for five seconds because it's 12 second duration. Uh, the leap cooldown is reduced, and you have unstoppable when you want to activate it, which is all very good and well. Um, it, it it's not the most game changing level 20 ability, 
but compared to say the other options here it's i think it's it's better um so storm storm style secret recipe just doesn't heal as much as you think it does especially in fights um i mean the issue with chen isn't sustaining it's getting bursted so if you're going to take any other talent here you take fortifying brew which is very strong it still um allows you to it's a good counter to CC, so basically it reduces the duration of the first Stunner Silence by 75%, and it resets the cooldown of your Fortifying Brew um, once every 10 seconds, so it, it helps quite a bit if they have CC. But most of the time I find that Elmo's a Conduit just gives more to a fight. So every once in a while, Fortifying Brew would save your life, but Elmo's a Conduit will have more impact in fights. And you should just be alting, and once you've alted anyway, it's 12 seconds, so the fight's mostly over by that time anyway. So you should have killed one target. Maybe two people have died just in the team fight in general. So um, hopefully they don't have as much CC and fortifying brew, and they should be low, and you're going to be coming out with full health. So I, I feel like Adam wants a condo is just going to have more effect. Um, so um, I would recommend always going Elements of Conduit. Um, even if they have a lot of CC, you just you just use Storm with Fire before the fight, or or when you're not like actually in the fight and you initiate with Storm with Fire, and then when you come out, um, you just play normally. Um, and then if you do it in that way, you won't even need, you, you won't even really benefit from for Purifying Brew anyway. So that's basically the, the Chen build. Um, oh yeah, for, if you go Keg, um, you can go Purifying Brew or Untap Potential. But again, I wouldn't really recommend Keg in the Hero League. Okay, so why am I talking about Chen today? Well, I think Chen, like I said, is the best tank in hero league um he can play he can be played solo or he can be played um he can be played as a solo tank or with another tank but it's generally better if you have another tank uh you don't want too much focus on chen unless they have no interrupts okay so the reason that i find chen is so good is because the enemy team has to counter pick to chen okay so if you are like the vast majority of players in heroes of the storm playing hero league you're probably not Masters, okay? You're probably not GM. You're probably not even Diamond or, or Plat. And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Um, but just note, so when you when you, if you pick Chen at, at these levels, that a lot of times people don't counterpick appropriately. So I, I find that a lot of players have their personal favorite picks that they want to pick, and they're going to pick those heroes no matter what. Um, so it, what that means is that, say a guy really likes playing Li Ming, okay? And you pick Chen. He probably won't pick a hero that counters Chen. He's probably just going to pick Li Ming and be like, I hope someone else picks a counter. Um, so what you'll find is that you can get away with with by, with playing Chen and the enemy team not having a lot of interrupts. If the enemy team has no interrupts for Chen, you can almost essentially guarantee a win for that game if you play Chen correctly. Chen is not only a very strong team fight hero, he is the best solo lane hero in the game. He is almost uncounterable. There are only two heroes that counter him, and there's one that will go even. So the two heroes that counter him are Dahaka and Alarak. So Alarak has good sustain and a lot of interrupts for Chen's drinking, and Dahaka has really good wave clear, pretty good sustain, and he has interrupt again for Chen's drinking. No other hero will, will counter Chen or kill Chen in lane if you play him properly in a 1v1 scenario. Okay. Um, Dahaka also has the added bonus of being able to teleport around the map, and if Dahaka gets low, he can just back and dig right back into um, his lane without missing any experience at all. Um, Sonya is will go even with Chen, but Sonya cannot one v one Chen. Okay, if you if you play the lane properly. So like on Braxis holdout, where obviously the lanes are usually four and one, so you have four v four and a one v one top. So say that Sonya is top versus Chen, Sonya will lose that simply because so if Sonya's spinning on the wave and spinning on Chen, she's perfectly fine and can sustain. But as soon as she has to leave the wave, um she can't 1v1 Chen on trying on the point. So she can't outcap the point because Chen will win um the fight as long as Sonya isn't spinning to heal. Um so those are the only three heroes that do relatively well versus Chen. Every other hero, like Thrall, um Zagara Whoever else you can think of gets destroyed by Chen. And this is simply because they can't break his shields, his fortifying brew. So as I said earlier, the way you're going to be playing Chen, especially in lane, is you just W, W, E, and then you drink, 
until your abilities come back up, and then you W E. And if you have a lucid brawler, like if they're against a Tychus, for example, W E. And then as soon as he procs his his passive on you, you lucid brawler and avoid it. And note that so lucid brawler is again so powerful. It, you can also reduce the cooldown of it by auto attacking. Even if a lucid brawler um, was just it didn't have your basic two attacks reduce the cooldown by three seconds, it would still be insanely strong. But the fact that you can also reduce the cooldown of it by auto attacking is insane. Um, so it's a really, really powerful ability against auto attack based heroes. So I think that pretty much covers everything I want to talk about with Chen. Um, he can also do Merc Camps pretty well, but he does them quite slowly. Um, he does them even slower if you don't have Ring of Fire. Uh, Otherwise, you'll you'll probably need help doing work camps. He can do them. It's just quite slow. Um, anyway, try out Chen. Give him a shot. Um, let me know what you guys think. And until next time, good luck in here, League.